I have another flashlight I want to share with you today. Something a little different from a company I'd not heard of before. This is the Spiraz E21. If you're interested in hearing more about this new light, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank the company Spiraz for sending me the E21 so that I could share it with you. So as I mentioned a minute ago, this is a company I had not heard of before. And this is a design that's brand new to Spiraz. In fact, when you see this video, it's a good chance that this light will still be in Kickstarter and not yet ready for regular sale. It will be worth your while taking a look at this if for no other reason than the price will be $29.99. I don't know of another flashlight of this quality at that price. However, not everything is good with this light. It does have at least one feature that I know will be a deal breaker for some of my viewers. All right, so let's get started. We'll go down to the tabletop. We'll go over the light with its key features. I'll go over its physical and performance specification, its modes of operation, then we'll get outdoors and do some testing. All right, just before we take a closer look at the light itself, I'll share with you what it came with. Now, because this is a pre-production model, it didn't arrive in any type of a special box. It was just a plain, uh, I don't know, small little box. No, no markings on the outside of it at all. But what was inside of it is, of course, what counts. Now, the manual that they sent with it is really photocopied or printed sheets. So it is quite large, single-sided. Again, that would be pre-production, but it is packed with a whole lot of information. So that's quite good. So what else did it come with? It came with a lanyard. Not sure that I can see myself using this lanyard, but it's there for those who want it. It comes with a USB type C charging port, uh, of course, and it comes with this unique little adapter that allows it to be changed into a power bank. So that would plug into the USB input port and change it into a USB type A output port. So nice little features to have. All right, let's bring the light back in. So as I mentioned, there are a good number of features with this that I want to go over. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's just start. The key thing that makes this different from other lights that I have uh, shown you before is the tail cap switch. Now I know that's not unique in and of itself. And the fact that it has a dual switch inside is not all that unique. It's how this operates. First thing I want to say about it, and this is a real pro for this light, is that switch is really easy to operate. I've mentioned before, even though the light or switch, a, a tail cap switch is really easy to find. I mean, it's right there. You don't have to go searching for it. Not all of them are easy to operate, at least for me. This one is one of the exceptions. Can you see how well pronounced that is at, above the top of the light? Really tactile, nice switch. Well, look how easy, you can see how easy it is to operate. It has a parcel press. I'll demonstrate more, of course, in a minute. Parcel press to get the light activated, full press it to lock the light on. And then it has what's known as a sub switch built into it. And to activate the sub switch, you actually push it sideways and it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. So that gives you options in the lighting that you can get from this. So that's one of the unique features. The next one is that it is dual mode. Now I've had re recently reviewed another light that had the same dual mode. So it's programmable for either a tactical setting or a camping setting. And it will change the way the tail cap switch actuates the different lumen settings, whether it's strobe or turbo or whatever, we'll talk more about that as we can, as we will in a moment. I also mentioned, of course, that it is a power bank. And uh, it can, it's something unique, I, I guess it's not something I would uh, think about it much, very much, is that it can be used in, a com, uh, in along with a USB Type-C remote pressure switch so that it can be added to a weapon. So yeah, I guess that's kind of unique for people who are looking for that type of thing. Now, there's a couple of other things I did not mention about this light yet so far. And these are both the pros and the cons. I'm just going to get them right out of the way right up front. So this light comes with an installed 5000 milliamp 21700 LG brand battery but it's built in. It's non-accessible. And I know people are getting ready to reach for the turnoff uh, of this video already. And I totally understand that. I was actually quite disappointed when the light arrived and I discovered you cannot access the battery. It's not something I was aware of before the light was offered me. However, there may be something that will um, 
make you more interested in the light. And the fact is, while it is in Kickstarter, it's going to have a five-year replacement warranty. Five-year replacement warranty. And after that, it has a lifetime assurance warranty. Now, we're going to talk about what that means because I did reach out to the company for a little bit of clarification because I wanted to know, does that five-year replacement warranty cover the battery? And again, I'll just talk, I'll wait until uh, we get to that point where I'll talk about that a little bit more. And what does a lifetime assurance warranty uh, mean as well? Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll move on to the physical and performance specifications. So the physical specifications for the E21 are as follow. The weight overall with the battery installed, because of course you can't uh, give you the weight any other way, is 4.76 ounces or 135 grams. The length comes in at an even 5 inches or 128 millimeters. The diameter, and because it's tubular, it's the same all the way down, is exactly 1 inch, 25.4 millimeters. It is waterproof to an IP68 rating, so that's as high as you can get, and it has an impact resistance rating of 1.5 meters. All right, just before we move on to the performance specification, it occurs to me I almost missed telling you about the pocket clip that comes with it. And I installed the pocket clip and I've left it on because I really like this pocket clip for a couple of reasons. It is a two-way pocket clip, but it's a well-designed one for a couple of reasons. One, it's actually got quite a bit of room inside of the clip itself to grab onto your pants. And as you can see, it is very deep carry. It comes right up almost to the top of the light itself. Two-way pocket clip, it is removable. Uh, yeah, it's quite a nice feature there. Now, the one thing that I thought was missing on this was where would the lanyard be attached to the flashlight? You don't. You don't actually attach it to the flashlight directly. You attach it to the pocket clip through that tiny hole. Uh, is that a bit of a miss? Maybe, maybe not. I don't think it harms it, but it's not an either or. It's not either you have the pocket clip or the lanyard. If you want the lanyard, you have to have the pocket clip on. All right, now let's get into the performance specifications for this light as I rotate it around and give you some views of it and make sure you can read that Spires E21 there. So let's start at the top. It has a turbo of 2,000 lumens, and that will last for four hours, and it has a beam cast of 322 meters. Now, there is no step-down listed on this. In other words, there's no heat protection technology, which will reduce the lumen setting to protect the flashlight itself. And I will tell you now, this flashlight gets hot, quite hot. Not so hot that you're going to melt plastic or anything else or blister your fingers, but it is uncomfortable to the touch when you leave turbo on for any length of time. There is a high setting of 900 lumens, and that'll last for five hours, and has a beam cast of 219 meters. There is a medium of 350 lumens, lasting for eight hours, with a beam cast of 139 meters. Low, 100 lumens, 26 hours, beam cast 68 meters. It has an eco of 10 lumens, lasting 220 hours with a beam cast of 21 meters. And I just want to point out that most of the time, the eco mode, firefly mode, uh, whatever else, it was, moon mode, whatever it's called by the brand, is usually in the half to one lumen range, not as high as 10 lumens. So as far as a very low lumen setting, it's actually kind, kind of high. Not so high that it's blinding, um, I was played with this in, in a completely in darkened room. I turned it on eco. I didn't find it all that bad. It wasn't so bad that I would say, oh, I don't like that. I won't use that in the tent. It isn't bad at all. In fact, it's probably a little bit better in that you can actually use the lumen setting. It's not just for finding the light. You can actually use 10 lumens and get a little bit of illumination from it. And you'll see that in a few moments time. And there is a strobe which will operate at 2000 lumens. Uh, it doesn't give the time, run out time for that. All right, switching from camping mode to tactical mode and back again couldn't be simpler. It's just a simple three light taps sideways on the sub switch at the tail cap. But in order to keep this from happening unintentionally, like if it was in your pocket or in your backpack or anywhere else, you must have the flashlight plugged in, plugged in to its power source. So an opportunity to show you the USB Type-C charging port there. And I will plug the flashlight in. Now, once again, what I'll do is just three little taps to the tail cap. You'll see the light flashed three times, in, indicating that it has moved over. One, two, three. All right, now it is in tactical mode, so let me unplug this. Now, in tactical mode, when I press down on the tail cap switch partially, I'll get 
instant turbo which is nice it's exactly what you want instant turbo so that you have it there and available to you at uh, instant access now if i side press the switch i get instant strobe which is nice now if i want to go through the lumen settings it's a full press down to the bottom and then i can just work my way through and there is memory so now i have it on the eco mode if i turn the light off and press a full click down again it comes right back into eco mode so that works out quite well i liked the way they have done that now my personal preference is i'll switch it back over to camping mode and that's where i'm going to leave it because the camping mode makes more sense for sense for the way i'll use this light all right just before i turn the flashlight back over to camping mode for our demonstrations outside and that's probably where i'm going to leave it is in camping mode because it just makes more sense for the way i use my flashlights to have camping rather than tactical what i want to demonstrate is how you lock and unlock the flashlight electronically so they're a great feature to prevent accidentally turning it on if you're carrying it in such a way that you are concerned about that happening so let's demonstrate that so right now it's still in its tactical mode so if i was to push on the sub switch that's that slight pressure to the side i would access strobe instantly but if i do so six times in a row then it will activate the lock now it's going to flash as i do this and i do have to keep track of how many times so let's give that a go one two three four five six and the light flashes twice to indicate it is now locked so you can see nothing happening if i want to unlock it it's just three pushes to the side one two three one two three all right i had to push a, just a tiny bit harder than i had so now the light is fully functional again all right i have shown you camping mode tactical mode how to lock and unlock and how to switch between camping mode and unlock and uh, tactical mode only thing left to do now is to get outside and do some demonstrations all right we're doing some nighttime testing of the spiraz e21 so this is low as you can see at my feet provides a little bit of illumination but not a whole lot let's run it up next level not bad next level and that's the highest so at the highest level you can see there is a central hot spot with quite a bit of flood or spill on either side there is some distinction between the two but pretty well they merge together it provides lots of light here in this backyard with that garage about 75 feet away not bad at all all right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Spiraz E21. What do I really like about this light? Number one, right off of the top, it is the tail cap switch. I like it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is so easy to find. Well, it's on the end of the flashlight, but it is so easy to operate because it is so raised above the end of the flashlight, very tactile. I like the fact that you can partial press to get one function fully pressed to access the rest of the lumen settings, and you can use that sub switch, pressing it from side to side just ever so slightly to do different things again it's probably the best operating switch of any flashlight that i've tested so far i really like that as well i like the clean white light it has that nice central hot spot but it does have still some spill or flood around the outside reasonable cast beam distance it is a very polished reflector inside that is quite deep but the diameter is not all that large so it does cast a good distance it does have a central hot spot but again not as much as say a real throwing light would so i guess it's a nice balance in that respect okay those are the things i really like about it what do i not like so much well um this is the least of the two because it's not going to affect you very often well it might but it might not if you're aware of it and that is just how hot it gets on the end as you saw i could barely barely keep my fingers around this area of the flashlight when it was left on turbo for more than maybe 10 seconds even it does get very hot i think it probably could benefit from some heat reduction technology in it there is there's no fins or anything to help dissipate the heat up here it's just part of the design it's something you'll have to decide if it's something you want to deal with yourself now here is what is the potentially fatal flaw for a number of you it's that non-replaceable battery it's a good quality battery it's made by LG so there's no question that it is a good battery it's not suspect it's not second rate it's not a second brand of any kind it's a good battery but I know you still can't access it and regardless of how good the battery is it really doesn't matter if you can't access the battery in times when you want to change it out that's that's frustrating to say the least I agree with everyone there 
So I reached out to the company and I asked them about their warranty because what I wanted to know is, does their warranty cover the battery itself? In other words, does the warranty, the five-year replacement warranty, cover if the battery should die. I want to read what I got back as a response and let you interpret it because honestly I'm not quite sure what it means. So let me read that for you. The five-year replacement. Spires offers replacement within five years of purchase if problems develop with normal use. Now this is only available for backers of the campaign in Kickstarter. Okay, so not everybody gets the five-year warranty. If you jump on this flashlight now at that good price, then, and I think it's worth looking at, if not for no other reason than that price, then I would like to interpret this to say, if the flashlight stops working and it's because of the battery, how, many, how else would you know? You wouldn't even know why the battery flashlight stopped working because you can't test the battery, right? But if it stops working, I'd be looking for a replacement within five years. I think that's the way I would like to interpret it. Now, what is the lifetime warranty covers? And this is from the, the Spirits people. If problems develop after five years of purchase, we will charge for parts. The total repair is free and is assessed according to the cost of the replaced materials. Beyond warranty, free warranty does not cover any damage or failure caused by normal wear, damage caused by disassembling or modifying the flashlight, damage caused by rough, or, uh, rough operation or misuse, improper maintenance or repairs by anyone other than an authorized dealer of Spiraz itself. So I think that's pretty, what do they call that, boilerplate? That's pretty standard for warranties. If it's not, you have a problem with it, don't try to fix it yourself and then say, I can't, so you fix it for me. They're just going to avoid the warranty. Um, okay. It has a lot going for it. Functionally, it has a lot going for it. I'm hoping that Spiraz will reconsider the non-replaceable battery because if they do, I would actually put this at the top of my list. It would just be icing if they could do something to help dissipate the heat up near the basal area. So that would be great, not necessary. Re having a replaceable battery, that's what I would really like to see. All right, I'll close with that and I'll open it to you. What are your thoughts? Do you have any questions about the Spares E21? If you do, please put them in the comments section below. All the information I have, including the link to the Kickstarter, will be in the video description. All right, until next time. Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.